When I'm critiquing solves, one of the most common issues I see is when you find an F12 piece, not being able to find the other one because it's somewhere at the back, and having to look to the back like this, or do a cube rotation to help find it. Looking to the back requires you to stop what you're doing and pause, and a cube rotation of course is a pause. So both of these should be avoided, and it's best if you could figure out where the other piece is without having to look at the back. This is called deducing back slots, because you're not actually going to look at what's at the back, you're going to use all the other information you have to figure out what must be there. We'll start by deducing last slot edges. So here, three slots are solved, of course, and we have one corner up here that needs to go with the edge into the back slot. Now, this is pretty simple. The edge can be in one of four places on top, or it can be in the back slot. To figure out if it's one of the top pieces, just look at which ones are your last layer color yellow. Obviously not these three. So it could be this one, but then we can tilt the cube or do U moves and it's not this one. Or as you were solving the previous pair, you may have already gotten a good look at the top layer pieces as you should have been doing lots of U moves. But once you know it's not on top, then you know it's the back slot. We're never going to actually look here first. That's why it's deducing. We figured out it's this one only because we know it's not any of the other ones. And once you know it's this one, you should only have to compare this color to this color to know exactly what case this is. Obviously, this is going to be a solved edge because the colors match, but a lot of people will still look here or do a cube rotation to help confirm exactly what it is. That is not something you want to do. Instead, you just want to see this color relationship only, and that should be enough to tell you exactly what case it is. In this case, it's last slot again. The corner is here, and where could the edge be? There are three possibilities. It's either this, this, or this, because those are the only ones that have only orange and blue. So of course we could do a U-turn, figure out it's not these, and then it must be this one. And then again, instead of looking at both colors of this piece, you have to be comfortable enough with the case to just go into it without looking. So this is a flipped edge in its spot. So we just pair it up like that. You'll want to practice that last slot idea a lot in your solves to make sure you're not tilting the cube or rotating too much. But now we're going to look at how this applies when it's not last slot. If it's right at the start of the solve, you probably don't want to do any back slot deduction because there are just too many possibilities of where pieces could be. You generally don't want to do back slot deduction until at least one of the back slots is solved. So for example, we have this case and we're going to solve it into here. That's not a back slot, but we will have to rotate. So after pairing them up, Instead of rotating this way and having a front slot solved and now two back slots, then instead we can rotate this way. And then that solves a back slot and now we can look at the cube mostly from this side. Now this is really similar to the previous case. We have one back slot where an edge could be in. We have four spots on top, but we have an extra two spots in the front. Now the two spots in the front should be okay because they're really visible, which means the only kind of invisible spot is that one back slot, just like before. Now the orange blue corner is here. So where is the edge? Well, it's not any of these. It's not on top because we've seen this. And so it has to be that one in the back slot. And just like before, we're going to compare this to the center next to it. So in this case, they match. They can either match or be opposite or be adjacent. So opposite is just like orange and red or blue and green. And then adjacent is just any other combination like orange and blue. So in this case, since they are matching, then we can just pair these up like that and do this. And if they were not matching, then you would have to do a different solution. So a quick review for how this works for edges, make sure one back slot is solved. And if you can do that as your first pair, that's even better. Look for the edge on top and in the front slots. If they are there, then obviously you have found it. But if they are not there, then it is in the back slot. Then compare the back slot edges color to the center next to it. That is the only information you get on the orientation of that edge. You don't get to look at both colors of the edge because that would just defeat the whole purpose of what we're doing here. Then of course, solve the case. Next is corner back slot deduction. Here we have an edge on top and it is last slot, so it's kind of obvious this is the white corner, and so we can just solve it like this. Although, even with something this obvious, I still see people have a habit of looking at the entire piece, which often involves a cube rotation. Make sure you don't do that. Now, if you don't see the white of the piece, then you actually have to do deduction. So in this case, again, just like with the edge, you want to follow a similar process. Make sure it's not on top, so it's not that piece, which is the only one it could have been based on all these other colors. And then don't actually look at any other color of this. It must be this one. And then we're going to use one color only to figure out exactly what it is. Again, compare it to the center, but the cross is solved, so compare it to this piece and to see if it's matching, opposite, or adjacent. So of course, if it matches, this is just going to be a solved corner and it's going to be white on the bottom. So you can just solve this like that. 
And if it's not either of those, then it has to be white on the back. And remember, this only applies if it's not any of the top corners. Don't just see a random color and jump to the conclusion that white has to be at the back. We're sure the corner's in here, and then we see that this is not matching or white, then it has to be at the back, and we solve it like that. Now with corners, when it's not last slot, you do want to follow a similar idea, which is make sure at least one back slot is solved, and then we're going to look at the front and top before looking at the back. So I have this edge here, and I'm looking for its corner. Clearly the top is all yellow, and this one is not red and green, so it has to be this one. So I've deduced its location, and I'm not going to tilt to the back because there's no point in doing that. I'm just going to deduce the case based on this color relationship. Unlike with edges, you'll have to do some memorization here, because when it was in the correct slot, like we showed earlier, then it's actually pretty simple to deduce, but when it's at the slot next to where it should go, the rules kind of flip. So of course, if you see white, then you can just pair them up like that, because seeing white is the goal. But if you see non-matching colors like this, then the white has to be at the bottom, and that only applies for when the corner is in the slot next to where it should go. So that's here or here. And that's where the memorization comes in, because if the corner was in the correct or opposite slot, then it's actually a different set of rules. So in this case, non-matching means white's at the bottom. So then you would pair them up like this. And lastly, from the matching case, that is going to be white at the back. So that's going to be paired like this. And then red and green again. In this case, if you've deduced that the corner must be in the opposite slot of where it should go, then the rules are going to be similar to when it was last slot and in the correct slot. So just like when it was last slot, if you see adjacent colors, that's going to be white at the back. If you see opposite colors, this is like last slot matching colors. So this is going to be white at the bottom. And of course, if you see white, then that's just white. In my experience, I've found corners to be trickier just because of that extra layer of thinking. But if you practice it a lot, then it will become like second nature. So the steps for deducing backslot corners is exactly the same as edges, except when you actually compare the colors, you're going to have to use some memorization to figure out exactly where the white of the piece is. This technique requires a lot of practice, so what I did a lot in order to get better at this was just do a lot of solves where, okay, so there's the cross, and I would try to solve the rest without ever looking to the back or doing an unnecessary cube rotation, and I would take as long as I had to to do this. So here is my first pair. And I would just try to solve this one next because this one's obvious, but this one is not. So I'm gonna do this one and I can see that it's not any of these pieces. It's not the front slots, so it has to be this one. And now I'm not going to look at what the two colors are. I'm just going to compare this and then go from here. So that's going to be uh, this case where it's not matching and that is solved like this. And then this one I'm gonna do next because again, this one is obvious. So it's not this one, it's not anything from the top. So it's going to be this one and these match. So I'm going to solve it like this. And then of course this one's obvious. So I probably just re-scramble from here. If you're using beginner F2L and you don't know how to do efficient solutions for these cases, then check out the advanced F2L tutorial. And if recognizing cases using only one color from the edge is not something you're used to, then check out this video where I talk all about edge orientation, how you can use that to help you recognize in your solves and reduce rotations. It's just a really good technique overall and can also help be a stepping stone to backslot deduction. And lastly, this is difficult and requires a lot of intuition, so don't expect to get good at it right away. It's not just something you learn once and then you're done with it. I recommend doing this sort of practice every once in a while, and over a long period of time, you'll start to see results. I hope you've learned something new in this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.